You think that America is the only nation that got a stimulus package? No. This is all over the world. And all over the world, a universal basic income, they call it the UBI, is being tested, is being prepared, and it is ready to be launched. What is the UBI? Take a look at the UBI, for those of you that don't know. We need a basic income as a matter of real priority if we are going to recover. I think ultimately we will have to have some kind of universal basic income. The job one is to get more money directly in the hands of the American people in the form of the universal basic income. I have now expressed support for a temporary universal basic income to help everyone. A basic income would be a matter of paying every individual an equal basic amount. It wouldn't be a large amount, it wouldn't be enough to cover all your essentials or, or your lifestyle, but would be enough to provide people with basic security in extremism. And the important thing is it should be paid individually, not on a household basis. I think the economic case it has moved from being desirable to being absolutely essential as a result of the pandemic. We have a fragile economic system. And in those circumstances, the pandemic is a profound demand shock. We have an incredible opportunity to create entirely new sustainable industries, investing in nature as the true engine of our economy. The current global crisis has disrupted every aspect of our lives. But it has also presented us with an extraordinary opportunity a chance to reset and accelerate efforts to improve the state of our world. Changing our current trajectory will require bold and imaginative action, together with determination and decisive leadership. In order to secure our future and to prosper, we need to evolve our economic model, putting people and planet at the heart of global value creation. If there is one critical lesson we have to learn from this crisis, we need to put nature at the heart of how we operate. We are on the verge of catalytic breakthroughs that will alter our view of what is possible and profitable within the framework of a sustainable future. We need nothing short of a paradigm shift, one that inspires action at revolutionary levels and pace. We simply cannot waste any more time. The only limit is our willingness to act. In 2 Corinthians 11:14, it tells us, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So anything that these world governments promise you for free, it comes with attachments. So how will this UBI system work? Well, it's not going to work with direct cash in your pockets. It's going to be digital. And what digital currencies provide the Federal Reserve is an opportunity to lend out fake money. Isn't it amazing that they, in a matter of seconds, can create fake money digitally and put it in your bank account but you have to spend 40 hours a week for a set amount of that fake digital money if you look at a dollar bill what value does that really have the only value that it really has is the fact that you think that it has value but really there's nothing back in it anymore so digital currencies provide these world reserve systems the opportunity to print an infinite amount of money because they no longer have to print it. All they have to do is press enter. And with the UBI and with digital currencies, there's going to be a digital ID attached to it. And there are going to be requirements. Digital ID from Australia Post is the easy and secure way to prove who you are. 
Like most of us, there's many times where Lucy needs to prove who she is. Digital ID is designed to simplify this process. Imagine Lucy being able to easily verify her identity when opening a savings account, proving her age and even accessing government services. On Monday, Lucy applies for a new savings account so she can start saving for her overseas holiday. While filling in her online bank application with a participating bank, she uses Digital ID to verify her identity by adding her driver's licence or passport details. She can easily share her verified identity using her phone the next time she needs to prove who she is, wherever Digital ID is accepted. There's no longer the need for her to constantly re-enter and verify information so she can get on with the things she enjoys doing. When providing personal details in the past, Lucy has been asked to share more information than necessary. Digital ID lets her share only the information required with the peace of mind that her identity is protected. Advanced encryption technology safely guards her personal data and ensures that it remains safe even if her phone is lost or stolen. With Digital ID, Australia Post offers a secure and convenient way to prove your identity. Verify your way and save time with Digital ID. Free to download from the App Store and Google Play Store. And these requirements are going to possibly require things that are gonna affect you and your faith with Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that this is the mark of the beast either, but what I am telling you is that this is the precursor towards that moment where you take a mark and an allegiance to the Antichrist system entirely. You need this vaccine to get the UBI. You need this microchip to get the UBI. You need a digital health certificate to be in the UBI. Social score is no longer a thing of myth. This is what social score will look like in our country. From January, every citizen of England and Wales will have a new social credit score. Government and private companies may use your social credit score to make decisions about you. For example, your score could affect the deposit you're asked to pay when renting a home. It could also give you discounts when you're shopping, put you in the priority queue for a new passport, or help you access some healthcare services more quickly. Your social credit score is based on information that the government already knows. The electoral roll, tax payments, criminal records, property ownership, and travel history. If you want to increase your score, you can choose to share more personal information securely with our certified partner companies. Information like your credit card purchases, communications and health information from your phone, energy use data from your smart meter, and your viewing and listening history from streaming companies. That information helps our carefully selected machine learning systems trust you, your friends, and your family. Plus, you can get fun tips on how to increase your score on the Social Credit app. Your Social Credit score is also affected by the scores of the people you live, work and spend time with. Everyone's score is public by default. You can check it on the Social Credit app so you can make informed decisions about your life. You can hide your score, but in some cases this may cause it to drop. Some things like disruptive actions hiding your data trail, or making decisions that harm others could lower your score over time. If this happens, you may find it harder to access certain government and private services. So if you have an old housemate, friend, or relative that you don't spend time with anymore, you may want to file a formal notice of disassociation on the social credit. And why does this matter, Tally? Well, why does this matter? It matters greatly because pay attention. My brother, my sister, and the Lord, with the rise of automation, large majority of jobs are going to be lost. I work at a call center, for example. I get cussed out for a living. That's what I do. Who do you think is going to be answering these calls in the next five or ten years? I'm not ignorant to that. As self-driving cars become a reality, the food supply industry is going to change dramatically. Everything is going to change dramatically. Surgeries are going to be done performed by mostly robots. I know I'm crazy, right? I'm crazy, but I'm not. You just live in la-la land, so you're not paying attention to what's coming. So in many of these jobs that are going to be left remaining, 
Do you think that they're going to want to allow a pandemic to ruin their workforce? No. In fact, once there is a vaccine for COVID, a lot of workplaces are going to require it for you to work. And if they're willing to arrest people, kick out people of stores because of a mask, do you not think that they would do the same if you weren't part of their system? So this means that if you can't work in a regular workforce, either because automation has taken your job or because the remaining job workforce out there does not accept you if you don't have certain requirements, that leaves you with the UBI. And if the UBI is not willing to accept you because you're not willing to accept it and its requirements, that leaves you with Revelation 13 verses 16 and 17 that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And my brothers and my sisters in the Lord, these moments are going to be crucial for many people to understand that they truly are coming. And yes, it is wise for you to prepare and buy your extra groceries, buy your extra this. Some people buy gold, some people buy silver. It's good you use wisdom, but at the end of the day, all it takes is for the government to do what they did in 1933, in May 1st, 1933, when they confiscated gold in America. An executive decision confiscated it. Executive Order 6102 was a presidential executive order that required Americans to surrender much of their gold to the U.S. government. President Franklin D. Roosevelt passed the order in 1933 as a reaction to the crippling effect of the Great Depression on the U.S. economy. After years of economic turmoil, the American people desperately required relief from the financial disparity induced by the Depression. The reason behind the order was to remove constraints on the Federal Reserve in order to print more money during the Depression. The order was issued within a month of FDR's inauguration, and all Americans were required to forfeit their gold to the government. Those who surrendered their gold were compensated with $20.67 per troy ounce, the spot price of gold at the time. Many were upset by this, as gold's price increased to $35 per ounce with the passing of the Gold Reserve Act of 1934. That's all it takes for Bitcoin to become illegal. For these world companies to say you must register them all or else it's illegal. And once they sign the order, it's done. In fact, they're the ones who made Bitcoin, so the CIA and all of them, so none of that is decentralized. All it takes is for them to say, turn in all your gold or you can't sell it. Then what can you do with the gold? Nothing. You have to understand the demonic financial systems of this world. They're not of God. And this is why the word of God says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. It's good for you to prepare with the things of this world. Because I myself, I live check to check, but I buy some extra water when I get paid. I buy a little bit of extra ravioli, a little bit of extra tuna fish. Use wisdom. Don't go to the store to buy stuff when everyone's flocking to the stores. No, use wisdom. But at the same time, use godly wisdom and realize that of his gold, no one can confiscate. And that if you seek Jesus Christ, regardless of what's coming, Jesus is with you. His power is with you. And this video is not to scare you. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but it is to remind you that as the second stimulus package is being negotiated, that they have a bigger agenda at play. These stimulus packages all over the world, these are the final nail on the coffin of this current financial system. And they're getting ready for a new one, even more demonic than this one, that will enslave humanity as we know it.